Deceit 2 has just released its free to play update, so I'm making an updated guide for it as there are many new changes to the game all around. But for a brief explanation as to what Deceit 2 is, if you haven't played it before, it is a 6 to 9 player social deception horror game that released late last year. It involves many lying, survival, and cooperative elements, so if you are interested in those, then you might enjoy this game. As a player, you try to figure out who among you are not being honest about who they are, or you will be attempting to deceive the rest of the group to hide your true intentions. Starting out with the basics, getting into a game, you'll be presented with one of three teams, Innocent, Infected, or Cursed with you being able to choose either your terror type on the infected side or your specific role on the cursed side. Innocents do not get a choice. Loading in, you will be spawned in a random place on the map. Voice chat is a massive part of this game, so make sure you're making the most of it. When you come across other players, you can use proximity voice to talk to them, share information, and potentially accuse them. As an infected player, you will have this option, but also a global infected voice chat that lets you talk to just your infected partner. For those of you that cannot or do not want to use the voice chat, there are a few different options for you. There is a quick chat option that you can use, as well as an option to ping certain things around the map, whether that be players, weak points, or tasks. Speaking of tasks, those are the main thing that will be progressing the game. It is the innocent's objective to finish all of them and escape from the ritual once enough tasks have been done. To help you along the journey, there are a few peddler shops around the map that will allow you to obtain many different items. Your first one will be random and free, but after that more item slots will be unlocked as more tasks are finished, and then you'll be able to pick which ones you want. As an infected, you will notice that you can see other players through walls. This will allow you to more easily activate weak points around the map without being caught. These weak points will bring forth the in-between or the night period where the infected become much stronger. You can find them all around the maps and they are always going to be in the same location each time. The more weak points you activate, the faster the in-between comes and the longer it lasts. When activating some of these weak points, you may see that they have icons above them. These are your terror mutations. Starting out the game, you have none, but through activating certain weak points, you will become more powerful as you unlock many single-use abilities that will end up helping out a lot. They can range from teleporting everyone to a random spot on the map, to silencing everyone for a period, or even activating a random weak point from anywhere on the map. These are also shared between you and your teammate, so make sure to coordinate before using them. Now, when it comes to activating weak points, sometimes an infected player will get caught coming from one. In this situation, the innocents will need to cast their votes on who they believe it is. This can either be done remotely or through interacting with the player after they have been downed by something like your fists or the pistol. Now, you have to make sure not to vote out the wrong people or else you are just losing one more person on your team. After enough time has passed in a round, the in-between will begin. This is a phase of the game that is dark and grey and much more dangerous. Players will be anonymous for the most part, you won't be able to hurt or vote anyone, and this is the time where the infected will strike. Once transforming into their terror forms, they are able to hunt you down and perform a sacrifice on you to kill you and take you out of the game. Every player has a sanity meter that is independent of their health. Many different things can drain this sanity, including simply being in the in-between, but there are ways to slow this down. Watch out for anything that shows this on your screen. That means something is draining your sanity, whether that be eyes on the wall looking at you, dogs barking at you, or the terror's active abilities. Be careful not to let your sanity get too low, or you will be able to be sacrificed by the terrors much easier. As below about 50 sanity, one grab from a terror will kill you, and at zero sanity, you won't even be able to run anymore. To regain your sanity, you have a few options. Either do your tasks, which will give you a little bit of sanity back, get an item like a sanity syringe that will refill it fully, or make it back to the reality or day phase again as you will passively regain it there. Surviving the in-between is not an easy task, but you have many things at your disposal to not get caught by roaming terrors. 
These mainly include wall cracks, vaults, portals, and of course items. You will be able to find many cracks in the wall and places to vault as well as portals that will take you to another part of the map. But when none of those are near you, it can be pretty hard. Make sure that you are stocked up on items that produce light, like a camera or a torch, as terrors and other creatures in the in-between are easily stunned by these. It is still important to know though, these are only measures to slow them down, as there is no way to directly fight back. Your main way of survival is running and getting away, as the only way to end the in-between is with a sacrifice or by running out the timer. Currently, there are two different terrors in the game at time of recording, the experiment and the werewolf. Both have unique abilities and play very differently. First off, we have the experiment. This is the base terror that you will have without having to buy any DLC, but that does not mean it isn't still very strong. The experiment has three main abilities, the chokehold, rage, and light block. The chokehold is a simple grab that will hold up a human, draining their sanity heavily. The rage will make the experiment charge forward and scream, with it draining the sanity of anyone it sees massively. And the light block will stop any light damage from stunning you, but at a reduced vision and heavily reduced movement speed. This terror also comes with a passive ability, being the rift eyes that pop up around the walls. The werewolf also has three main abilities, a leap, a howl, and a sprint. The leap is a simple leap that jumps forward and will grab anyone in its range. The howl will disorientate and drain sanity of anyone who hears it, and it will also make the AI wolves that roam the map howl as well, showing the auras of players near them. The sprint is just that, but it does take a little bit of time to ramp up to its max speed. Something to note though is while sprinting, the werewolf will not see any auras of players, so make sure to slow down every once in a while to see where people are. And as I mentioned earlier, the werewolf's passive are AI wolves that roam the map and bark at players. The barking will drain sanity like the experiment's eyes, and like the eyes, they can be stunned for a while with lights. Something that all terrors can do is break the wooden walls found around the map to make an easier path to hunt players, as well as block off wall cracks that players might try to escape through. Though to note, the experiment is more of a brute force terror and will break or block these faster than the werewolf. This is a trade-off though, as while an experiment cannot vault, the werewolf can and is pretty fast while doing so. The maps themselves are also not only filled with tasks, there are many different points of interest that may even be exclusive to the maps they are on. On the Asylum map, there are blackboards that anyone can write on. This is useful when you are silenced or don't use a mic, or just to make cool drawings with. There are tenoys, which allow you to project your voice all across the map if you need everyone to hear something. There's also the most important point of interest, the inspection machine. This activates near the beginning of the game. This will allow one person to scan whoever sits on the chair in the inspection room. This will tell the person scanning what the person who is getting scans role is. This is a one use ability though, so use it wisely. The Project Worgen map also has a few things like this. It also has tenoys across the map, but something new is many doors that will only stay open when the right code is put in, which is found on TVs all around the map. The inspection room on this map though is a bit different. These vats will show whether two people are on the same team or not. This means it can produce a green result even when there's two infected in there, so this makes it a lot more interesting. Something that is present on all the maps is the escape doors. This is where the innocents will go to escape with a key once enough tasks are completed. This key can be picked up from any of the peddlers, and each peddler's key corresponds to a specific door, which is just the one that's furthest from that peddler. Once a key has been picked up, it enters the final escape sequence. Innocents will have a countdown timer where they need to escape in that time or everyone dies. While holding the key, an innocent cannot use any of their other items, so coordinate with your fellow players to help them while they carry it to the exit. If this is not possible and you are about to get killed with the key, you can send it back to the peddlers yourself and let someone else pick it up instead. As for the terrors, grabbing any player in this phase will kill them quickly and not in the sequence, so you can sacrifice as many people as you can. Once someone is sacrificed with the key, it goes back to the peddlers until nobody is left or the key is used on the door by the innocents. 
Something that I mentioned earlier but did not go into specifics of is the cursed rules. This is effectively a neutral team, solo for now, but there may be cursed rules in the future that have a teammate. These rules will all have different win conditions and play very differently. The base role that you will have without buying anything is the Mimic. This one is pretty simple. After a couple people die or are voted in the game, you will be able to choose from one of their roles, turning you into a human, possibly with a human role, or an infected. This is helpful all around as it effectively gives the losing team a bit of a helping hand. Our second cursed role in the game right now is the Chemist. This one is much more of a killing or evil role than the Mimic. The Chemist will be able to choose a person every once in a while to poison them, blocking their abilities for a short time. Once everyone in the game is poisoned, everyone will start to drain health quickly and die if the Chemist is not voted out. You can narrow down who the Chemist might be by saying who is not poisoned, as the Chemist does not poison themselves. While not really doing anything early game, this role is very deadly once it gets to only a few people left. The Innocents also have roles of their own. By default, in games of 9, there will be 2 Terrors, 1 Cursed, and 6 Humans, 2 of them with human roles. These roles can include the Guardian, Warden, and Inquisitor, along with whatever new roles come out after this video. The Guardian is able to protect one person, not including themselves, before each night. If that person is sacrificed by a Terror, they will instead live and end the in-between without a sacrifice. Quick note, every player can only be protected once per game, so be smart about it. The Warden is able to choose one person per game to mark. A player who is marked will instantly die if they are downed, regardless of how many votes are on them. Though if the player who is killed is an innocent, the Warden will die as well. For the player who is marked, they just have to make sure they are not downed until the Warden is dead, as when they die, the mark goes away. The last current human role is the Inquisitor. This role is an information role, as activating its abilities will show footsteps of recent players near you, as well as show how long ago a weak point was activated after you report it. This can also show the mutation that the infected got when using this. That just about covers what I wanted to go over when it comes to gameplay, but there are some things I wanted to go over about the out of game experience. This is the current menu in Deceit 2, and there are a few aspects of it that you should know. Firstly, to match make, you can simply hit play, but if you want a custom lobby, you can make your own, or search for an open party here. The menu also showcases your current accolades or challenge progress, where the higher rank of accolade progression you have, the better implant that you get in your hand. As you can see here, I'm currently gold. There is also going to be different rewards for this in the future. Something else new about this is the leveling system. Each character has its own leveling, as well as the roles of Innocent, Infected, and Cursed. These also will unlock rewards along the way as you level them up by playing games and completing objectives. And lastly for this section, of course, the cosmetics. You can unlock all sorts of cosmetics here, including for your items, humans, or terrors. Some of these will be obtainable for free and through events, or just by purchasing directly with shillings you buy with money. And the last thing I want to go over in this how to play video is actually how not to play. I know that things can get pretty tense in a game with shooting, sacrificing, and most importantly lying, but that does not mean it's okay to ruin others experience with verbal abuse, trolling, or any other offenses that may end up with you getting actioned. It is most important that you know that this is just a game and to not take it so seriously. A complete rules list is on their website so you can see what not to do while in game and so you know what you should be reporting others for. Also remember, there are mute and block options in case you run into any unfavorable people. And that just about wraps it up for this Deceit 2 guide. It's took a lot of work to make, so I really hope that it helps some of y'all out there getting started on your deceitful journey. If you enjoyed it and want to see more guides and gameplay for this game in the future, I recommend subscribing as I have much more content coming out for it. Once again, hope you enjoyed and thank you all so much for watching. Rebel bullet strength.